This is the all new 2024 Toyota Tacoma and I think it's going to print money for Toyota. Welcome to Out Motorsports, the channel for cars as you are. I'm here with the brand new Tacoma and it's replacing one that ran for quite some time that honestly I didn't like a whole lot. Now there's been plenty of new Tacoma content already out there but Toyota's got these equipped to tow and you know we do a lot of towing on this channel so we're going to put a trailer behind this and see how it pulls. But before we do we got to talk about what they've done here. So uh, there's a lot to talk about. It's a brand new truck. Let's get right into it. So first things first, we should talk about the platform that this is riding on. So this is a new platform for the Tacoma. It is on the TNGA F platform, the frame platform that Toyota is using for all body on frame trucks and SUVs that they sell now. So that's this, the Tundra, the Lexus GX, the LX, the Land Cruiser, all of them are going to be on the same platform. Of course, it is stretched, it is shortened, it is, you know, it changes based on the vehicle you're driving, but it's a great start. I've liked how some of their other body on frame vehicles drive and more importantly, how they tow. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this one performs here in just a second. Now, suspension wise, Toyota did do some things with these and the biggest thing versus the old model is that you've got coil springs on the rear end. So the old ones used to be leaf sprung and a lot of automakers are moving away from that with their trucks because you get a better ride and for most people doing most things coils work just fine now most of these will be coil sprung but toyota did retain the ability to get leaf springs if you really really want them they have them on the basic sr trim now this one is an sr5 which is one step up from that this is going to be your most like mainstream trim level that has you know, everything you need and nothing you don't. You can get some options on it. We'll talk about that in a second, but that is what they're doing with the chassis and the suspension. Now, this one has fixed rate dampers, fixed rate shocks. If you get the limited trim, you can get adaptive variable suspension, which is what Toyota calls it. That's adaptive shock absorbers that can get softer or stiffer based on your drive modes. And then of course, if you have one of the TRD trucks, those will have more off-road tuned suspension. But I'm a fan of this because this is set up for highway driving and, and towing and all that. It's just got basic suspension highway tires. That's all you really want if you want to tow with the most stability and the, the best of everything in mind. Now drivetrain wise, let's talk about what's going on under the hood. So Toyota got rid of the V6 that they had in these trucks before. And honestly, I'm okay with that. I was never really a big fan of that V6 in the Tacoma. It works just fine, but it just felt like a car engine put into a truck because that's really what it is. They had the 3.5 liter V6, which is lovely in a lot of things, but it didn't make a ton of power and torque down low. You had to rev it, and it was paired to this transmission that was kind of just reluctant to do a lot for you, and it was just kind of a pain to drive. I'm sorry if you're a Tacoma diehard and thought it was great. I just it didn't land for me. But Toyota has changed all this, and they've really bet the farm on some new engines. So for reliability's sake, they know they have to stand up. But what they've got here is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It is making 278 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque. And that is paired to an eight speed torque converter automatic. And in this case, you've got four wheel drive with a limited slip rear differential. So that is your drivetrain going on in this one. Some of these Tacomas will come with the hybrid system, which is going to still be a turbo four cylinder, but it's gonna be paired to a hybrid electric motor and battery pack. And it's still gonna have a torque converter automatic. It will not be a CVT. Those trucks are not out yet. The hybrids are not on sale, but that is going to be a little more power and torque, and it's going to help your fuel economy just a little bit more. Now, Toyota says this one will do 23 on the highway. Uh, we're not going to figure that out while we're towing, of course, but uh, this is going to be not as good as the hybrid for fuel economy, but it's still an improvement over the old one. So that's what's going on up here. Now let's talk about towing a little bit. So then towing with the 2024 Tacoma. Now we're gonna talk about this one in SR5 trim. I don't know every tow spec for every trim level because uh, my brain is not that big. I can't remember it all, but this is the SR5 with the non-hybrid engine. Toyota rates this one for 6,400 pounds and they say that you can get another 100 pounds out of it if you have the smaller cab size. So this is gonna be what most people buy. It's got that regular uh, double cab is what they call it. That's got four full doors. And if you want, they still offer an extra cab that's just like the cab and a half that doesn't have a back seat. That one will do 6,500 pounds just because it's a little less weight overall for gross vehicle weight rating. But in any case, this one's rated for 6,400 with 10% tongue weight, so 640 pounds. And I asked Toyota because, you know, they're not, they're not competitive with some of the other trucks in the segment, notably the Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyon. Those are rated well over 7,000 pounds. And they just said, look, we're not trying to chase numbers with this truck for the sake of towing. A lot of our buyers are gonna use it 
on the street and off-road, and that's where we want it to be the best. And 6,400 pounds, 6,500 pounds is still pretty good for most buyers doing most things. So they elected to not do anything more, and I think that's okay. Now you've got a standard two inch hitch receiver right here. You've got room for some nice big safety chains with their hooks. And then you've got your standard uh, trailer wiring connectors right here on the bumper. So they're nice and high, easy to access. And then the truck does have a built-in trailer brake controller. This is an SR5 with options. We gotta talk about Toyota's whole building tool. It's a whole separate conversation, but uh, most of these can have a built-in trailer brake controller. So this is all a nice upgrade from what you got in the prior Tacomas. It's roughly the same trailering weight that they supported with the prior model. So let's hook this up and see how it does with my enclosed trailer right at the top of that rated capacity. All right, so we've got the trailer hooked up and we have to set things up in the gauge cluster. Now this does have the smaller of the two clusters, but it's still digital in the center here. So it's a uh, seven inch screen going on. So this is what you're looking at. And it says, do you want to add a trailer or use temporarily? I'm just going to set it up for real. Add a new trailer. We'll call it car hauler because that's what it is. Save. And I'm going to use it. Great. I guess that's all we have to do. Now, the trailer brake controller is down here by the steering wheel. So you've got this guy set up. And when I go up here. See, I want to configure this because this trailer is heavier than 5,000 pounds. So let's go to Is this where I do it? Several hours later. Okay, I found the setting. So when we go to configure a trailer in here, hitch type is ball. You're not going to have a gooseneck on this truck. That's funny automatically figures out the length for your blind spot monitor, and it is electric brakes for more than 5,000 pounds. We're gonna save that. Okay, so before we start towing, let's talk about what I just got in the trailer there. We've got my friend's Audi TT RS with me today because I don't have my race car, it's down at the shop, but it's gonna be a good uh, challenge for the truck. It's gonna be right at that loaded weight. I've got some other stuff that's out of the trailer. Normally I'm a little heavier, I'm closer to 7,000 pounds, but there's some stuff taken out. So we are right around that 6,400 pound number. Now the truck was sagging a little bit before I got the car in there. That's just because the uh, trailer is very nose heavy when you've got no car in there, of course, because I've got a toolbox, I've got spare parts, that sort of thing, all in the nose. So now that there's a car in there, everything's balanced back out. We do have weight distribution. I use a Blue Ox Track Pro hitch that I really like. I will link that in the description if anyone is looking to buy a weight distribution hitch. It does that and sway control. It does a really nice job of it. So with all that, let's go ahead and put this in drive. There is a tow haul button right here near the four wheel drive controls. I'm gonna turn that on, make sure my lights are on and we are good to go. All right, so let's talk about towing with this 2024 Tacoma. So first things first, we're gonna be just in a little bit of a city suburb type environment here, just getting out to the highway. And in that sort of environment, most things will feel like they're towing just fine because you're really not stressing the, the truck that much. You know, you're, you're crawling around at 20, 30 miles an hour. But in this case, first impressions, acceleration is of course, adequate. We're getting up to 20, 30 miles an hour, but the brakes feel really good. And I have long said that older Toyota truck brakes, I just never thought they felt that good. The, the pedal feel is not confidence inspiring to me. And this immediately feels much better. And again, as we accelerate here, really not a big deal. Anything will smoosh its way around at 20 or 30 miles an hour and feel okay. But as we accelerate, we're going to head toward the on-ramp. This is hanging out at like 3000 RPM or so, and obviously the turbo was doing a lot of the work, and that was just something that I felt the old Tacoma's drivetrain really just was, it was so mismatched to how you would use a truck as a truck. It was very revvy and very screamy, and that's, you know, fine in a, a sports car or like a Camry, but you don't want that for a truck. So this immediately feels much better simply because you've got all that download torque from the turbocharger. Now, as we slow down for this off-ramp, and head toward the toll booth. Uh, things feel okay. I wanna talk about the rear suspension and the feel, but once we get up to highway speed, but steering feel is good here. I feel like uh, even with the weight distribution and all that, I'm not, I've got enough weight on the front axle, but the steering is nicely weighted and uh, you know, good enough feedback given this is a truck. This is, that's kind of the whole point. All right, and then as we accelerate to highway speed, come on girl. All right, foot's in it. 
This is floored. And there's 60. So uh, it is adequate for power and torque. It is a it feels about like how it feels in the Colorado and the Canyon. They're you know they're all going to have to work a little harder than something with a V6 or a V8 and more torque and more horsepower. Like it it only is what it is. But I think it is more than enough for some people. Now if you're pulling really really steep grades all the time with a trailer this heavy, yeah this might feel a little overburdened. But I think especially if you're pulling an open trailer or a little bit less weight or both, uh, it will be just fine. And that extends to the suspension as well. So it is, the rear suspension here is just not quite doing what I want. There's a little bit too much movement for my taste. Uh, this feels fine. It feels safe, but I don't love how much the rear is kind of undulating up and down a little bit. And you can just feel it's, it's busy back there. And that kind of goes with how I felt the last Tacoma was too. They, they are tuned, I think, a little soft on purpose for the sake of off-road use, even the, the non-TRD variants of these trucks. And this one still just feels a touch soft to me. Now, where this might change is if you get a limited with those adaptive shocks, perhaps in tow mode, those get a little stiffer and everything feels a little bit more smoothed out. But either way, this is not bad. It's just not not quite to my taste. And then also worth mentioning here, as we do even little grades, the transmission, having the eight gears goes a really long way. This does, the shift logic is pretty good and there is a manual mode here, so you can shift it yourself if you want, but I've been fine just in tow haul mode, leaving it in drive. Now, other companies will do some pretty strong braking logic with, with automatic downshifts in tow haul mode. That is not something that I think they're doing here. And Toyota doesn't tend to do a lot of it anyway. That's something that Ford does really well. And I've felt GM does pretty well too, but, but Toyota historically doesn't do a whole lot of it. And um, it's, it's fine. You can downshift on your own if you want but uh, your brakes are more than adequate. The, the pedal feel, like I said, is really, really good. And combined with the brakes on the trailer, of course, uh, it's gonna be more than enough to stop the truck. So generally very, very impressed with this. It's towing about as well as I thought it would given, <laughs> given how much weight we've got behind it. You know, this is, we're, we're pushing it pretty hard here. So it's doing a nice job. I think with, uh, with less weight, less trailer, whatever, uh, it would do even better. So I think for most people and what you're gonna be pulling, this will do a nice job and it will be so much better than the last one. One of my biggest complaints with the last Tacoma was the drivetrain. I thought it was so poorly matched to a truck. The other complaint that I had was that I simply didn't fit in it. I was so uncomfortable. I'm six foot one, and those trucks were just not designed for tall people. This truck, I am so comfortable in. It is, I mean, I cannot explain the orders of magnitude how much better I fit in this versus the old one. So uh, the seat is comfortable. I've got enough leg room. I can slide the seat back and still reach the steering wheel. I'm not, I don't have my knees up in my ears or anything. Everything is comfy. I've got leg room. I've got a nice dead pedal for my left foot. This is so much better. <laughs> Whether you like the, the dashboard and everything, that's all personal preference, but I do like it. I think it's fine. Uh, the, the dash is fairly low, so you've got good visibility. The door sills are, again, fairly low, and it's, it's a much better place to spend time than the last truck. It feels much more cohesive, much more thought out, very, very well done overall. This being the SR5, it's single zone climate, which is fine. I don't care about that. It's got nice big chunky knobs for your temperature and your fan speed. And this has the smaller infotainment screen. It's got the eight inch screen, which is honestly plenty because the other one that you get is a 14 inch screen that comes off the Tundra and it is huge. And I, I just don't know if you need Apple CarPlay that big. So uh, I'm okay with this. This truck does have the optional JBL sound system in it. Now, keeping in mind, this is a pre-production truck. So also if you're making comments about like cheap looking plastics, this is not final production intent. But I don't know about the JBL sound system either. I'll have to ask Toyota, but can't do it before I film, of course. Um, the JBL sound system is not very good in here and that's kind of disappointing. So I am hoping that maybe that's just a pre-production foible quirk, but uh, either way, it's it's adequate. It's not actively bad. It's just not uh, not outstanding either. Go on, little coffee grinder. You can hear the turbo a lot, which is kind of fun. That seems to be a trend with all these turbo four trucks. They, they give you some noise because that's the whole point. They add a little drama, some mystique. 
Anyway, uh, that is how this thing tows. That's how it is to drive in general. It is, you know, for, for how I use a truck, I think this would do generally okay. I think I'm pushing it a bit with what I'm towing, but if you're towing something less, it will do a really nice job in general. So um, huge, huge, huge improvement over the last Tacoma. I really was not a fan of the last Tacoma and this is something that I actually am enjoying driving. So that I think speaks volumes here. Um, whether the styling is to your taste, the paint colors, the interior, all that, that is up to you, but it's a big improvement. And I just, my level of comfort over the last one, I think is so great. All right, that's it for this towing review of the 2024 Toyota Tacoma SR5. Thank you, as always, for coming along. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe right here on YouTube. Follow us on all the other socials. And head over to outmotorsports.com if you'd like to connect with some other LGBT automotive enthusiasts and amateur motorsports competitors. We've got a whole community online. We host events in person, both at the racetrack and on the street. We would love to have you for any and all of that. Till next time, stay safe, be well. See you for the next one.